months ago, maybe three months ago, I decided to give myself an experiment and I wasn't happy with the results I was getting with my health. I was training hard. I was eating well. I was intermittent fasting for 16 hours a day. I was sleeping well. I was taking supplements. Like I was trying a lot of stuff and I wanted to try to like lose some extra weight, but also just kind of feel like there's some little inflammation here from past injuries and sports. I was like, I just want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've never tried a, you know, multiple day fast. And I remember you mentioning about just, Hey, eating less will help you live longer and help you get less disease, which will help you live longer. And I said, okay, I'm going to try a, I did a four days, no food, essentially four days, no food, water. I had a little bit of juice on some days and I had black coffee and I just drank a lot of water. It wasn't until a week after the four day fast when I started to feel the effects. Sure, I like lost some weight because I wasn't eating for four days and I felt like healthier in general. I felt super focused and clear, but it wasn't until like a week, two weeks later when I was like, huh, I just feel better. I feel lighter. I felt like more flexible, less inflammation. What is the power of doing a one day fast, a two, three day fast? How often should we be doing these types of fasting? And I want to make sure that I don't tell people go not eat for three or four days without talking to a, a doctor or nutritionist or something. But what is the, the benefit of not eating for a day or two days? What does that do for our body long term? Well, we're still learning, right? Um, we've only just finished doing, we as a field of scientists have only just finished doing a lot of animal experiments, but we're now in a, a period where we're actually finally doing these in humans. So what do we know? Uh, we know that if you fast for one day, you're going to turn on these, these three main mechanisms that protect the cell. Um, their names, by the way, the, there's one called mTOR, which senses amino acids that we eat. Uh, there's one called AMPK, which it controls and registers how much energy the cell has. So if you eat sugar, you'll switch it off. If you're not eating sugar, it'll switch on. And then the ones that we work on, they're called sirtuins, and there are seven of these sirtuin proteins that protect the cell in very different ways, um, but all, all seemingly good. The question is, how much should you be doing? Well, we know from fasting for one day that you, you activate these defenses. These and that's three defenses, so we want to we activate these three things as much as possible or once in a while. Good question. I, I think it's better to do it once in a while. You don't want to always have them on. And the reason I can say that is based on animal studies. The best effects we've had and my colleagues have had is when you do things and let the body rest afterwards. For example, we did a study with resveratrol, this molecule from red wine that activates one of these sirtuins that I was telling you about. We gave it every day to mice uh, or we gave them this calorie restricted fasting diet, but it was when we actually gave them resveratrol every second day that we got the longest lived mice uh, in combination with caloric restriction. So that's just an example of many that we're finding that it's helpful to, to pulse the body and let it, let it rest. And it, it, it does make sense that you want to have a hunker down period where your body is fixing itself and removing bad stuff, but then also a repair phase. So when you go back to eating regularly or uh, you're not you know, running marathons every other day, which some people uh, tend to do, then your body can recover and grow and heal. So yeah, long answer to your question, but I think pulsing it is the right way to go. Is there a calculated approach to say, okay, if you're I'm 225 pounds, male, 37 years old. How many calories should I be eating a day? Like, is there a, you know, a perfect system to this of like, okay, if you eat 1,000 calories a day for three days in a row, then you have 2,000 for a day, then you fast a day. Have you figured out this process yet with rats? No, no, it's not, it's <laughs> not like that yet. That can uh, be interesting. Yeah. The problem that we face in the field is... Uh, we were talking earlier, you and I, uh, before we went on air about funding for science. We don't have tens of millions of dollars to run these clinical trials. Uh, we're, we're always scrounging for money and always worried about what's going to happen when it runs out. 
Um, so we can do some experiments, but consider a, some of these longevity experiments in even in rats and mice, they take about three years. Um, mm -hmm. And if you do it in monkeys, then your whole career is used up by one experiment. And so what, what we're trying to now figure out is what's the right combination of what you eat, when you eat, and what supplements to take. And that combination is hundreds of thousands. And you can't run hundreds of thousands of these experiments. Wow. So it, it's, it's hard to find the optimum. But in general, what I would say is that if you fast for one day, you get some benefits. If you fast for three days, something interesting happens. You turn on another level of, of cell cleansing. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about that. So there's this process called autophagy, or uh -huh. some people call it autophagy. It, it is what it sounds like, auto, which is self, and phagy is eating. So you're self-eating. And what that means is that protein that have <laughs> got these all. You're eating yourself. You're killing it. Well, eating the, getting rid of the bad stuff, recycling the bad proteins. As we get older and also if, if we have damaged proteins, say if we eat a lot of burnt food, we will accumulate proteins that have uh, oxidation is one, for example. And these proteins also are very hard to get rid of. They tend to clump. Uh, sticky. And, uh, they're, they're sticky. Um, and, and Alzheimer's is, is disease is a good example of that, of uh, proteins that stick together and, and just accumulate and you can't get rid of them easily. But autophagy is this process where the cells can chew these up and recycle the amino acids in those proteins. But we, our bodies, especially as we get older, do a, a pretty crappy job at doing that. Um, and it leads to things like macular degeneration, neurodegeneration, and others. Now, what, what one day fasting does is it turns on autophagy and will clear out some of the proteins. But uh, from my reading, if you do three days of fasting, something else kicks in. It's a different type of autophagy. Uh, it's called chaperone mediated autophagy or um, CMA. And it was discovered by uh, a good friend of mine in New York, Anna Maria uh, Cuervo. And uh, she has shown that this CMA process is really important for extending the health and the lifespan of, wow. of mice. And I'm, I'm helping her a little bit with a, one of her companies to bring this to humans and hopefully treat diseases, uh, for example, like macular degeneration. But wow. anyway, long story. Uh, so three days really starts to kick in the benefits. Is there a time when fasting too long hurts the body? Well, sure. You need nutrition, right? Your body needs to needs amino acids to repair itself. I, I can't stress enough that we don't want anybody to lose so much weight that it's bad for them. Yeah. There, there are a lot, especially young people who, who can overdo it. Yeah. You, you always want to have some adiposity of fat on your body. You need it for, for lean times and your body needs it for you know, energy when you're sleeping, for example. But so I, I think that going for a week is okay. I haven't done it myself. It's too difficult. But uh, what's the longest you've gone personally? I, I'm not that good at it. Uh, I, I've gone <laughs> for a day. That's about it. I tell you what. I, four days was tough, but it was also like once I set my mind to it, and I was just like, I'm going to commit to this. I also wasn't that hungry. I was just like, okay, I can go a little farther. It was just weird because I'm so used to eating every I don't know four or five hours. I was just like. Is everything okay? Like, but I felt the effects. I felt like it was getting better. Like my body was healing. I felt like the pain was starting to go away. And I just felt clear and focused. That's a common um, thing that people report is you'd think that you'd be distracted by hunger, but what actually happens once you do it for a longer time or you've, you've done every other day eating for a while, or even in my case where I, I like to skip breakfast and have a late lunch or maybe even go straight to dinner, your body gets used to it. You don't feel those hunger pains. If, if you drink a cup of tea or even a glass of water, it, it num numbs any desire. Yeah. That's when you know you're doing it right. But also what people report, uh, and I, I can tell you from my experience, it also focuses the mind. And you're not distracted at all. In fact, it's, 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 it's like a high that you get. Uh, and I can get a lot of work done when I, I'm yeah. uh, in that phase. <laughs>